Yep. Are people remembering that the second floor, the blocking spacing is 8.5, or is it it's 9.25 on the first floor? You guys remember that? Okay, there's a lot of little nine, nine units. 9.25. 8.5. Well, top floor, and then the top bottom, floor. Nine, 9 and a quarter. Yes. So look at the... I want to make sure everyone gets that, because we're going to have to redo the blocking if it doesn't do... But look at the today's design lesson thing. Look at slide number 10, 11, 12. Those are, those are important. So we said that it's there. We said that on slide 10, right? So that's an important number. 10.375 at the top. If you go through the math, and someone should verify that. Uh, 11, we are what? 10.125? That's what I thought we talked about the other day. 10.125. Oh. Uh, oh, I see, yeah. Oh, yeah, so we derived. Okay. I thought we updated it to 10 and a quarter. 9 and a quarter versus 10. 10 point. Well, here I'm saying we're off by like 7 eighths of an inch. Yeah. Okay. So I think. Rigorously speaking, I think this one is correct. I'm saying the 9.25, we said just leave it because we're okay with that because we, we have 1.75 inches of leeway there. Um, so here, the actual proper calculation is, okay, let's put that in red. And you can verify it. Let's verify real quick. So it's, um, this is the nine foot module, right? Nine foot module. Yeah, this is like devils in the details here. Um, module is 107 and 5 eighths. We know the the interior plywood is going to be 96. So you got to go 107 and 5 eighths minus 96. And what is that? 107.625 minus... 9.6 is 11.625. That's 11 and a 5 eighths. That is right. And then the spacer is going to be the 11 and 5 eighths minus 1.5. So take that number minus 1.5 equals 10.125. That's the technical answer. Now, if we only have it nine and a quarter that means we're seven eighths inch further down that still works you're still catching the top of the plywood that's okay but it should be 10.125 so since we got all those blocks just don't worry about it for now it's still going to work because we've got 1.75 inches and so we still have one inch to screw into that's okay um leave that but that's the technically correct answer now look at the next slide do we agree with that there it's 8.5 and, and we've been through this I think already so 90, 95.58 so that's second story which are the 8 foot um, now where are we getting 86 what is 86 7 feet um, 86 we're, we're getting 86 because we're saying we would like okay so the 86 is like that's a made-up number like we're cutting that originally it's 96 we said okay we're gonna cut off so let's let's document that um, decision use a 10 inch you that's called the utility channel what you see there right remember that where the electricity goes utility channel by the way, which the architects that we met yesterday were impressed with, they liked it, that we're not drilling through any studs. 10-inch um, utility channel. If you define that channel to be 10 inches, that determines, and why 10 inches? Because 7 inches is a good space. That's about this much for your wires, like this much or so. That's just about right with a three-quarters inch space in there, because that's those blockings there are one by lumbers one it's called 
one by two, one bys are three quarters of an inch. Um, so we got a three quarter inch by seven inch gap in there because the whole thing is 10 inches. So that's the whole rationale there. Uh, so that's an explanation of the utility channel height. Therefore, if that's all 10 inches, that spacing down there is 8.5 because you got a 1.5 bottom plate. So 10 minus 1.5 is 8.5. So remember that on the top floor it's 8.5. I'm just making sure that everyone's doing that. I know Wes was doing it correctly and some other people, uh, but let's verify that. It's not the same on the top floor and the bottom floor as far as the, the bottom blocking. It's a little different. And why are we making it different on a first floor? because there the consideration is a little different. We're taking a full sheet because we have nine foot panels and it ends up wherever 96 inches is. That's what we're just taking. Here we're saying we're taking the optimal distance for the height of the utility channel. Um, Therefore, the height of the utility channel is not super optimal for the bottom, but it's it works. It, this is a lot of detail here. Uh, um, if we look at uh, so going back to the slide number ten and eleven, what does that mean? Okay, eleven for the lower which is the utility channel, right? So there, the utility channel is 11 and 5 eighths. Uh, that whole height there. But what we're doing, yeah, so it's, that's, we have to do it. It's a little too large. It's a little larger than we'd like, but we live with it. And in order to live with it, we're using um, so instead of the one by two at the bottom, I'm going to actually paste that in for the detail. The, the utility channel, I'm going to paste that into slide 11 because it's a slightly different for the utility channel. And the way it looks here is going to be like this. So I'm going to make space here. I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to shrink it down a little more, but there's a little detail there. And, and this is um, it's actually important for anyone who's learning how to build this. But in our case here, we've got 11, so that dimension is 11 and 5 eighths of an inch, which we see right there, determined by the full length of the plywood sheet, interior plywood. Okay. Uh, this one here, we're going to make 3.5. That's going to be a. It's called a 1 by 4. It's like 2 by 4s are actually 3.5. A 1 by 4 is going to be 3.5. So actually, this is like a little, you know, maybe, you know, hangs down a, a little bit here. So it's a 1 by 4 down there which still gets us to about seven inches. Let's see, how much exactly does it get us? So it's uh, 3.5 plus 1.5 is five. Um, and I'm gonna go to this here. Okay, so this is, there's more details here because this is sitting on a bottom plate, a, a, a sill plate, okay? So this is like when you, this is like advanced <coughs> design here, but we're sitting on, this is not like the first day wall modules. This is this, this is sitting on a sill plate that's on the foundation, right? So that's what's happening there. That that one by four is actually going all the way down to the sill plate. Um, let me zoom in on that. So here's where that goes, which means that. So where's the where's the foundation? The foundation is like. Uh, let's do a polyline here. So foundation is here. So we're here sitting on a foundation like this. That's the floor. That's the inside inside floor. Um, 
fit. So that's the inside floor. So this, that's what we have to work with. We're sitting on, on top of a silk, silk plate and therefore, uh, so this one is, it's 11 and 5 eighths to there. It's not to the floor because this is sitting on a sill plate. That's an important detail. And man, it's just a lot of details here. Um, so I'm going to put a broken dashed line here to show that that, that distance is. Let's get rid of those arrows. Distance there is 11 and 5 eighths. Um, that means. So 11 and 5 eighths minus. Um, okay, so another important distance here would be, well, let's see, it's 11 and 5 eighths plus uh, this 1.5 to the to the floor. Point five inch to the floor. Um, so the final question is, what's the distance of this gap here? Because uh, we want it around. So the question is that, what is that distance there? It can't be too much. It has to be around seven inches there. It can't be too much. It can be less than like seven because you're not going to fit your wires in there. Um, so about seven is about right. We wanted to do that. Okay. So what is that distance there? It's going to be, um, we have to sum up the vertical distance, which is 11.625 plus 1.5 minus now 3.5 and 1.5. So minus, right. minus 5. So 8.125. That's, that's good. It's a little bigger than on top, uh, so, because we got more wires on the first floor too. So it's a little, little bigger because the one on the top was seven inches. Um, and then that's what we end up with. So let's say eight point one two five is the derived quantity there. That's about good. That's pretty good. Now, why do we try? Why don't we try to force the top and bottom to be the same? Uh, would that be possible? Like, what if we made? Because we're saying we have the different distances. Like we have the uh, ten point one to five actual on a bottom floor. On the second floor, we've got about. 8.5 that's one and a half difference could we make the top one the same and still it would work well if we made it 1.5 higher we'd go all the way this this is just strictly the utility channel yeah so, uh, length yeah we're looking at that blocking so would keep, uh, keep things that? uniform well what we're saying there, we'd have to add 1.5 inches to that 8.5. That's getting a little tall, like, because um, um, you want to remember, like, the space screw spacing is like six inches for things not to warp up. Here, like, the middle can maybe like bubble in and out if it's too too wide. So, I think 8.5 would work still, but seven is better. Um, seven is better. And um, what's going to happen to us with eight? Well, I mean, we're running into that risk of this stuff like warping up. Eight point one two five. Well, anyway, we start building them these this way already, so I think we we can continue doing what we're doing uh, in the future. I don't know. I, We just have to keep track. It would be easier if both spacings were the same, so we don't have to worry about different blocking size. But 
think we're okay this way because we we're trying to get optimal on the second floor like that second seven inch it's a little larger like you know an inch larger on the first floor um, but I think that's okay if we don't like it we can use maybe <clears throat> maybe start this bottom blocking a little higher so we reduce that distance like we can start this blocking uh, now you don't want to lift it up because you don't want you want backing ac across the cover plate here one where you screw it and you want backing you want backing all the way at the edge of it so yeah I think this is good good for now we might I mean this these are real details like we might want to optimize it. The, the good optimization point is that you keep the blocking on the bottom of the second floor modules the same as um, first floor second floor that's definitely convenient so you have to worry about less things um, I think we'll be okay like this now if people did let's see did, did anyone not do 8.5 on the second floor and what's the effect of that people did a little higher like one and a half inches that means you'll have one and a half inches of, of the plywood hanging off at the top that'll still work I mean it'll still you just got it's not optimal but it would work you want to have the edge typically covered um, but if it's not supported just one inch is three eighths inch plywood so that's you're not gonna like break that um, but it's just a little non-ideal situation so even if people did not do it correctly I think we can just let it go for now and uh, but keep the uniform height of the 86 that we have to that's fine that part is fine because we have to cut it off somewhere and 86 is convenient because it is a nice round number like it's 96 minus 10 so it's not too complicated so yeah keep going forward but that's the detail of the, all the utility channels um, that we want to that we went with mm -hmm. all right well it's close to noon lunch time we'll do the workshop so in the workshop we'll continue on um, doing the second floor I'll, I'll come up with some I think probably what we want to do is start doing the interior modules the window modules so I'll try to over lunch and get the cut list for the uh, for the doors I, I meant to do that I just got, you know, got talking on all these things um, doors we can do and then interior modules so that's and then continue what we've done yesterday What's the status of everyone here? Where we're at, like, you guys are finished with your mod modules, or you're ready for the next ones, or? I have to do the header on my oh, yeah, window you're, module. You're working. That, that's it. And then the, okay. ones, the ones we're building physically. Yeah, I just finished mine right before we left, so it's, I just need the next one. Mm -hmm. What's your next one? So you don't know which one? I okay, don't know. so so yeah. we need allocation. Ken, you done with yours? Uh, no, we're working window. A window, so you have. Okay. I am. So I think I am. Okay. Um, Paul is. I think Wes is working on those two, but we're waiting for we need wood for certain we need certain cuts. Um, I, I forget what we're. Oh missing. yeah. Yeah, but we need we need parts cut out for. And it. who's is somebody keeping track of which parts we need to cut out? Let's see the 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 spreadsheet kind of had a cut list, but um. Where is that? Uh, it's toward the bottom. The a good thing to do maybe would like you'd have to count all the statuses and then count all of the modules and then be able to determine like oh well there's four nine foot panels that need to be built so then you'd have the you know two times four of a certain cut and then yeah. uh, six times four of the blocking and so on and so forth depending on how and it updates automatically as it's completed so that's well, what's that's what's what's updating automatically well if you if you update the status for a module then it subtracts the number of parts that are still necessary in the spreadsheet oh. but that, that, that takes a little bit of formula oh man who's doing the formulas Paul? <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he did the beginning ones I, I mean I can try to take a look at it I'm trying to think about the cut list too. Like well, we want to. We're going off strictly off CAD, so it has to be something Python can generate out of. 
out of pre cat because that would that would save you a lot of time. Right. Yeah, and that depends on the modules being finished, and which we don't have. So so we're like we're kind of struggling through this right now. Once we have the full, that's why we want to have that full digital model because yeah, you can generate all those cut lists automatically with Python. So. Um, in the meantime, like what we were doing is just giving a cut list to Jeff to, to just say, okay, here you go. Um, for the Windows, so how are you going about it? So you, you, you guys got all got, the Windows guys all got, like how are you keeping track of which part you need? Well, I know we were, can't have them written down, but I know for sure that we have the 2x12s, the 2x6s um, that are 48 inches long, and the 2x6s that are 8 and 3 eighths long. Um, and we're missing the 2 by 6 that's 39 inches. Um, the, I don't know, what's 19 and 7 eighths, so I'm not sure what that is. Two of those for each of us. Um, the two blocking 19 and 7 that are 2 by square. 2, 11 inches, and then the one blocking that's 2 by 2, 14 inches. Mm -hmm. and there's, so one, there's one about 60 inch. 60 inches. The picture. Yeah, there's a 60 inch too. Do you have that? No. Well, I don't have that. Yeah, you need that. Oh, yeah. oh wait, that's not even. Yeah, oh that's man, that's not that's even in the list. Yeah. Okay, so we need two sixty inches. Where did that disappear? That's not even in there. Okay, so two. Mm-hmm. Two two by six. Sixty inch. Four ninety one at seven eighty. So we need well, eight in total of those. Two by twelve. Over. Okay. We might have those two by sixties. Wes might have cut no, those. No, not the sixties. Oh. The fifty-nine. Oh, the thirty-nine. Okay. Oh, that. That's right. You're doing the second floor windows. I was looking yeah. at like so you sixty, <laughs> 60 thirty-nine. Okay. Yeah. And uh, just one other thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So you guys can pretty much cut yourselves out. Uh, that would be okay. Uh, you can do it. Um, and in the meantime, I'll generate. So, so yeah, keep cutting, right? You guys are doing this all yourselves, right? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna try to scare you about the danger of that saw. It's got a guard on it, but I lost the finger myself. That's that's the brick press I ate it up. I put my hand in the. We used to have a shaker on it, which a vibrator thing. It's a hydraulic motor. So I put. I was going up there and I looked inside. And the thing ran because it's automatic and stuff. Mm -hmm. it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, but be careful about this. You guys may not appreciate if you never got were around power tools and you don't know the kind of accidents can happen. They happen fast, and you know, be scared of that machine because if you get your hand in there, your hand or fingers coming off. So, kind of have that awareness where, oh yeah, it's kind of cool, no problem, uh, mm -hmm. normally, but have like a respect for it where you think yeah this thing can eat me up if i don't respect it like have that kind of mindset where it's not like oh yeah no problem anytime uh uh because it's a dangerous tool i mean it's got a very sharp blade it cuts through things right away so um definitely respect it just just have that awareness the thing is like i think the number one thing to do is if you're fatigued in a workshop like quit you know that's when the accidents happen because you're just not you don't have your awareness um, you know, people are not, <laughs> we have limited intelligence, like already we have limited intelligence and if you're tired, you're even more retarded. So <laughs> uh, that's, I mean, I, I say that about myself, man, you, when you get around the, you know, building things, sometimes you just get amazed by like how you miss something and all that. It's, <laughs> it's like the, and you know, we think we're really smart, but kind of, we should have humility about that because our the way our memory works it's like we really process it's almost i like to say we're one bit depth smart like we can only think about one thing really at a time you know it's that's pretty dumb <laughs> it's like a worm an earthworm <laughs> it just thinks about making the next step <laughs> as much as we can think about sometimes um so yeah uh but definitely uh Thing, just make sure you're rested in there you know feel free to like if you if you really feel like you're out of it like and you feel like you might get unsafe just you know take the day off you know rather safety than than getting hurt stuff like that so 
Um, definitely try to get pay attention to your sleep and stuff like that. But anyway, so yeah, we can continue. Jeff's gonna get out the other saw. Don't use the other saw. That's the one. That's a dangerous one. It does not have a guard. It has the half guard. It doesn't have that sliding guard part. So we're gonna put one on there to make it safe. But in the meantime, that's Jeff's saw you're using. You keep using that, and we'll fix up the other ones. We have two cutting stations. But don't use the other one uh, yet until we we're okay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, sounds good. Anything else? Uh, just wanted to confirm on the upper floor windows. Yes. Uh, we've only got two 48 inch uh, plates, top and bottom. Yes, yes, uh, that's actually right. And that's because, that's a good observation. And the reason for that is because that window is so tall that we can't fit another plate under there without making it even lower. And you actually don't necessarily need it. And how does that compare to the, can we logic out then? Why do we have? Wow. Okay, Ken, you just pointed out that we can probably get rid of it on a other one window, other window too by extending the other ones as well. So actually, that's a that's an interesting point. Do we see any, see any issue? There is a little u uniqueness on page eight that yeah, you don't have that top plate, but that's actually okay. It doesn't doesn't hurt us. Um, Let's see, you know, if you think about the forces there, uh, comparing slide 7 to slide 8, well, um, the point about slide number 8 is that all that weight is on the 2x12s transferred through the 81 3 8 long ones on the sides. Um, so the 2x12 also serves as a place where you nail the window fin into. I think that's okay. The only unique thing about it is that it doesn't have... It's... Insulation goes inside there and it doesn't have something to hold the insulation from the bottom. But once you insert the window, yes, that, that holds the insulation in there. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's really necessary unless... If somebody watching this video, we're recording this, if somebody thinks that is necessary, let us know. But I don't see a reason for it to be there. It's just another part that we're saving. And it allowed us to have the window just a little higher. Like we, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, the other reason is we wanted to have the windows be at a uniform height all the time. So the tops of the windows be at the uniform height. I think that's another reason. I think we're even with the door. Uh, so that I think that was the reason why we try to get away from it um, If you look at slide 7 well, we have that plate and Yeah, we could have gotten rid of it in slide number 7 and maybe that's an optimization we make um, So we'll give the engineers and see if they say anything to the contrary But for now we're, we're fine on as it is for the slide number 8 Yeah, it's just a minor detail there might be something like regarding um, it's not structural, it's not a structural defect, it's maybe there's some requirement by codes where you have to have that member there, but I don't see it. I don't see any structural reasons why that would be needed there. So I think we're okay. It's just that if you don't have it, it's screwing in the 2x12s. Oh yeah, so for example, screwing in the 2x12s into those six pieces that that are up there, it's just a little harder because you have less meat to screw into but we still have a top plate over this entire thing so that kind of bonds this thing to next walls adjacent to it we are connecting this to adjacent walls still so I think yeah feel okay about it it's uh, wherever you have the vertical studs there you have to attach the 2x12 to those but you can get one screw per one of those so you can get like 12 screws all together attached to the things that are below that the top the the 2x12 because you've got six studs and you can screw in one screw on each each side plus some additional ones on the sides too so I think I think we'll be okay you just want to make sure you're connecting the 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 header the 2x12 to whatever is below it in a solid way 
but I think with the whatever 12, 14, 16 screws, I think that's that's fine. Um, yeah, so we should be good. But yeah, good observation there. That's those kinds of details. Is I mean, I'm being ruthless here to just try and take everything out that we don't need because um, people might just say, oh yeah, let's do like what we did in seven. Yeah, we did that. That's kind of like more standard uh, with the long piece under the header. But we're just trying to be like, let's rip everything out that we don't need if <laughs> we don't need it. So yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so I'll try to get more more uh, cutlass over lunch and continue it after lunch.